I know there was a couple things you definitely wanted to promote. Uh, before our half hour expired here, so let's get to those. Yes, first. I did want to talk a little bit about our Children's Gala, our mm -hmm. WVU Medicine Eastern Panhandle Children's Gala. Um, it is scheduled for April 20th. I know that seems kind of far away, 2024, but it's not. We're in the process now. Um, our uh, sponsorship co chairs, Liz Oates and Dr. Nikki Arvon, are in the mm -hmm. process of securing sponsors for that event. Um, that is an annual event. We were actually able to do it for the first time um, this year in April. We hadn't been able to hold the event since 2019 because of COVID right. and some other issues. Because it's quite a large event. We nice sell out. I mean, we have. How many people generally? 250. 250? <clears throat> yeah. mm -hmm. That's how, our max. How much do you raise, Teresa? Um, this past this year, I keep thinking it was last. This past year, uh, this past April, we raised one hundred and two thousand dollars. And what is the purpose? The purpose is to purchase equipment um, here at Berkeley and Jefferson Medical Centers um, to take care of our pediatric patients and um, babies, nursery mm -hmm. nursery babies in NICU. Mm -hmm. So um, we've actually held the event in 218, 219, and then had to take a hiatus for a few years, and then um, were able then to, to resume this year. So we were very um, happy with the result. That was net proceeds um, because it, it was an increase over our 2019, which mm -hmm. was about 101,000. So. How does this fundraiser compare to the golf tournament? I think because that's your biggest one, is it not? No, actually, this is our this biggest. Eclipses mm -hmm. that then. This is, even though we've only been doing it since two eighteen. Um, the 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 great thing about this is our um, colleagues from Morgantown who work for WVU, the foundation, um, and, and raise funds for the WVU Children's Hospital mm -hmm. in Morgantown. They actually have been holding this event in Morgantown for almost twenty years, mm -hmm. and up in Wheeling for about fifteen years. So back in 2017, Albert Wright, our president and CEO, came up to me one day and said, Teresa, we're going to be doing one of these over here in the Eastern Panhandle. So, Which know. means you're going to be doing exactly. one of these. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So a group of us, actually, a um, couple of our foundation board members and myself, um, we went to the Wheeling event back in 2017 just to get a feel for mm -hmm. what it was like. And it was unlike any other uh, fundraiser yeah. I've been to. I mean, the, the hospice, um, yes. Hollywood Nights is a very, yeah. very good event. Yeah. Um, but this is uh, the, by far, I mean, we have a theme. We transform the ballroom wherever. It, the first two years we had at the Clarion, um, this year at the Holiday Inn, and we'll be at the Holiday again, and again on April 20th, 2024. Um, yeah. But tr transform the ballroom. It's mm -hmm. a a black tie event. Um, we have cocktails. We have dinner, a full served dinner band, um, and throughout the evening we have an auction, live auction, sure. silent auction. So that's how we raise our funds between sponsorships. Um, so give us an idea of the hundred and two thousand dollars from this year. Where did it go? Did it well, we're actually purchasing the equipment um, now. <laughs> what kind of equipment? Are we uh, we're, talking about X-ray machine kind of stuff? Or no, we, no. Yeah. It's it's all equipment that is needed in our NICU um, or PEDS unit at Berkeley or OB units at both hospitals. So we're buying um, two panda warmers for uh, Jefferson Medical Center, one that will go in the nursery in the OB department. And I'm sorry, two what warmers? It's called a panda warmer. Okay, it's just you, an okay. infant warmer. Oh, I see. Okay, um, sure. So one will be used is for the emergency department because that helps with their always ready for kids arc. It's called mm -hmm. um, accreditation so when they see children in the emergency room there. So one will go to the emergency room and one to the nursery at Jefferson. Then over at Berkeley, we're buying, um, and it's not. It's called a giraffe warmer, but it's not a giraffe. <laughs> and I, and I giraffe. guess they have to have these names because. <laughs> It's an equipment for kids makes sense, yeah. right? Well, at least but, we didn't ship all the giraffes back to China. Yeah, yeah. We do with the pandas. But um, so we, we're actually purchasing three of those: um, two for the um, NICU and one for the the PEDS unit. But it, again, it helps PEDS units. Pediatrics. Okay. Unit. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. <laughs> Teresa, I knew what you well, meant by that. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> That's when he starts his military. Jargon. Yeah, no, no, no. Come on, Teresa. That's why. Oh, I'm sorry. If you want to get even with him, just call it a boat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Admiral. Um, the the, the uh, this piece of equipment allows us whether it's mainly for the um, NICU babies, newborns, um, they can actually um, stay in it. It's a warmer, but if they have to go for X-rays or be transported to any other departments for testing, the unit actually is mobile, so it goes mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like an all-in-one type sure. of piece of equipment to care for newborns. Now, what size is your NICU, your NICU unit? I Our mean, NICU is an yeah. eight-bed unit. Eight-bed, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it full most of the time? It is, actually, unfortunately. What happens when you don't have room to the kids who um, need? We've exceeded eight from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we do have a big open area where we can... Um, bring more beds in. Mm -hmm. So is there a specific dream list for the funds to be raised in 2024? We haven't gotten that far yet, John, but um, we will start. The committee has started to meet yeah. and um, most likely at our January or February meeting. Um, we actually rely on our nursing supervisors at both hospitals to come up with um, mm -hmm. a wish list. Um, this year we're adding um, Dr. Jason Turner, um, who's one of our general surgeons. He requested to be on the committee. He has mm -hmm. some ideas of things other than equipment, you know, maybe, um, you know, uh, a, a better play area in the PEDS unit for children who have to be hospitalized um, and, and some other ideas he has. So, Which brings me to a, a question. Uh, we had Judge Redden on this past, uh, past week, and he's talking about getting a comfort dog for the court system and he made in passing perhaps be able to work with a hospital as well with mm -hmm. a comfort dog i don't know if you had these discussions two questions one is this something you'd like to do second question is do you have comfort dogs coming in we do we have we, pet therapy is okay. what we call it okay. yes yeah. and not just for the kids yeah. they yeah. visit um other units too they go to the oncology unit go to behavioral health um mm -hmm. they basically go on any unit um as requested staff, staff actually enjoys could you come closer to your mic Dana? Oh, sorry staff actually yeah. enjoys having them come in too yeah. there's a big white fluffy dog that every <laughs> But you see a lot of pictures with staff, yeah. Yeah. you know, excited to yeah. see the dogs just as much as the patient. Yeah, my, one of my sons a couple of years ago told me during finals week <clears throat> that the college was bringing in dogs for the kids to pet in a particular <laughs> to classroom. To help them <laughs> so, prepare for their I said, finals. I said, I said, oh, seriously? We didn't, have, we didn't have dogs when I was You just took your final and sucked it up. <laughs> we just he got said, hot dogs at midnight. That's, that's, that's what yeah. we got. <laughs> told me that times are changing, Dad. You got to change with them. So there you go. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, how much does it cost to go to that, by the way, Teresa? Uh, individual tickets are $200, but sponsorships start at 1500 and actually go all the way up to 15000 mm -hmm. which is our presenting sponsor. And actually, I'm happy to announce that United Bank, United Wealth Management mm -hmm. signed on once again um, at that level. Um, and then CNB Bank is going to be our um, beverage sponsor. That's mm -hmm. another $10,000 level. So we work at filling the um, premium, we call those levels first. So we have favor sponsor um, at 7500 um, We have auction sponsor at 7500 um, Oh, and um, pill and pill and our uh, boards, our foundation board and, and hospital boards are have secured uh, the dinner sponsorship. So we, we're doing well with our um, premium sponsors. But. Well, about what would it cost to call this the John Gilstrap Celebrity Auction? With the money. Come with, on. How much money would that be? Yeah. Go high, Teresa. Go high. Don't go cheap now. 100000 know? 100000 He can do it. Yeah. He can, he can, he, easy. He, he can do it, yeah. But just don't get him to sign a book at the time because he'll charge you extra for the okay. book. Sign. Isn't it time to go to commercials? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting this joke about the book signing, but that's I'm be, sure that's it's a good Because one. it is a well-beaten, worn-out, <laughs> okay. tired All joke right. that, that right. has ceased to be funny, but it's okay. Raise your hand if you think that's not funny anymore. I think it's funny. I think it's, I think it's very funny. I agree with Bill. And, and I'll keep reminding him every time I have the chance. Well, maybe, maybe it should be an item for the silent auction then. I think you're right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's Dana? a good idea, Dana. Yeah, it, we'll have to add so her far, it's only, raised, it's only raised ten dollars. Just so you know, so it's it's not well, a hey. Hey, it's better trees, than nothing. Our expectations trees are a little small higher seats, than that. Right? Dana, what do you have for us? Um, so right now is the time when people start thinking about taking care of themselves and their health and New Year's resolutions. So we have programs which are called self-management programs. Mm -hmm. We have chronic disease, chronic pain, and diabetes self-management. These are programs that we've offered at like the senior center, you know, at our facility. So we, um, they're great programs for 
good for just about anybody. Every, all of us are probably dealing with some kind of chronic condition. So it helps you kind of take charge of your health. Um, they're six week programs. So we are in the midst of scheduling them now. So I don't really have specifics on them, but we are going to be out and about in the community while from both in Berkeley and Jefferson County. I do have a chronic pain scheduled in Jefferson County at the Charlestown Library starting in March. We have a leader training. So if there are people interested, you may be going through the chronic condition themselves and they like to help others get through it. We have, um, cause these, the programs are actually taught by a health professional and a lay leader. So it's um, something that anybody can kind of teach to help others through their chronic condition. So we have a leader training coming up in January. And once you go through that training, you can lead um, this one is for chronic disease, so you can lead a chronic disease self-management program. So. Is this part of a palliative care program for the hospital? Uh, not necessarily, because that is specifically for a certain type of patient. This is for people who want to take charge of their health and hopefully sure. not get to that point where they need palliative yeah. care. Yeah. <clears throat> is there a large demand for this? Um, there is, because um, obviously, like when you look at the diabetes self-management program, we're well, well we're number one in heart disease number one in diabetes no number one in came up as number one in obesity again to yeah. us the state yeah so these are programs that definitely a lot of people could take advantage of um, and once people do do the programs they all are very positive and uh, feel very rewarded from participating in the program so i know that people who come into it and do it and really engage in the program really benefit from it why is uh, why is there such a diabetes and obesity problem now, Dana? And besides, well, people are eating too much and not moving enough. I get that, but yeah. but there's got to be more to it than that. There is. There's a lot of factors. I mean, you can look at the social determinants of health, where we're looking at just the environment that we live in. Um, you know, the economy of depending on you know where you live and what you have access to just all kinds of factors you know the you know there's much more processed food out there there's less walkability you know there's just unfortunately there's no one answer for all of it so how much is uh i, I guess the marketing of fast food and the, and the way we just kind of run in and grab something and run back out and do whatever we're going to do in between stops how much is that playing into everybody's poor health probably a lot you know it's just you, you have to Decide, you know, you, at this point, it's, you know, the, you want to make the healthy thing the easy thing. So you have to actually first plan for that, and then it becomes hopefully easier for you. How much of it is tied also, I mean, to make excuses, obviously, I, I could learn to, to lose a few and, and, and walk a few. But at my healthiest, when I had a 32-inch waist and a size 38-inch, you know, a size 38 suit, and really a healthy young firefighter who worked out a lot and all that, I was still classified as overweight by the BMI charts. I think I started, I don't think I've met those standards since I was like 10. Well, right? as you know, I don't know if you've heard, the BMI chart now is starting to kind of go away. Okay. So there's a lot of factors that play into that because you probably had a high muscle mass, which makes you maybe a little bit more on the scale, but you weren't that big. <laughs> So your height and weight, when you take that into consideration, makes you look like you're, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger would be considered obese at his height, right. because, you know, at his height of his career. So, but is that where uh, the obesity, is, is some of that in play here when it comes to states being named the most obese or the... No, I don't think necessarily. Okay. No. They're all playing by the same rules. Yeah. Well, that's true. Right. Uh, right. Know, if you look at, you know, physical activity, eating behaviors, like how many fruits and vegetables, you know, that you know, we're low on those types of things, which contributes to it, so. Of course, we're all painted with the same brush. How does the Eastern Panhandle fare compared to other areas? Are we um, obese? Are we, uh, are we heavy toward diabetics? Or? Um, I think we're kind of in the middle. We're not like the best out there and not the worst. You know, we've got the southern part of the states a little bit worse. Jefferson County fares a little bit better than Berkeley County, you know. You know, we just complete in 2022. That was what our third community health needs assessment that At we least, did, yeah. and every one of those assessments that we have done, which is required because we're a not for profit hospital system, it's the same basic issues that come to the forefront every yeah. time. Explain so that to us, uh, yeah. Teresa. How is that? Is that how do you determine the data, uh, and what goes into this needs assessment? So it's, we survey the public, and we've gotten anywhere from like maybe 6,000 people to respond to the survey. We get very good responses yeah. to the survey. So when we do, um, you know, the data that's out there on the st health statistics, you know, combining all of that, 
gives us in our priority areas, which we will look at for the next three years to develop programs. And this year, it's mental health, which includes substance use. It's chronic disease, which includes obesity, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and then um, access to health care, which looks a lot at transportation and those kind of issues. Along this line, I'm going to scratch a very sensitive sore. I realize this. Uh, And I realize also it was not your decision. But have there been regrets that we've closed the wellness center? Big smile. I'll take Danny. that one. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to hear. Me. I mean, certainly, you know, that it was a tough decision. But if you look at what is there now, which is kind of on my list, talking about some of the growth initiatives that we've implemented, we exp- expanded our Heart and Vascular Institute. Um, that is what took the space that used to be the wellness center. They used what to have was a wellness center. Oh. What does that mean? It was, it was a, a fitness center. Okay. But but it's more than that. Mm-hmm. It, was it was really the core of the community. Mm-hmm. It was a hospital that. based wellness yeah. fitness center yeah. that was open to the community. And um, yeah. A very loyal, loyal group of folks that went there, including myself all and Dana, us. all of us. All yeah. of us. Yes, and, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, know, you, um, you look at things that are happening in the community, though. You know, the One Life is going to be open in that facility, yeah. which will have a lap pool. Sorry. And so there are things maybe taking that space. Um, mm-hmm. There are hospitals also doing some needs assessments on what, I don't know if we can, I don't know if on maybe something else that could come into the community. So we're hopefully, you know, going to fill that gap. Certainly health, wellness, fitness, that that's still part of our mission. Um, but as I said, it was just looking at priorities. We needed a larger space and a space that now can accommodate a lot of the testing. It's much more convenient for our patients. They can come now into the Heart and Vascular Institute. We have our th- uh, thoracic surgeon there, our vascular surgeon, all of our cardiologists. A lot of the testing that they may have had to go to the hospital for can be done there now. Now, the cath lab, of course, is still in the hospital if they need that um, intervention. But um, it, it, it's just, and actually, I had our Rotary Club touring it the other day. Um, procedures yeah. now we're going to be able to do there, um, the echo testing. So it's just, it's, it, it is certainly a benefit um, for our patients. And as Dana said, heart disease is a very prevalent disease here in our area. So we do have a lot of folks um, so, using so, that that service. So, Annette, there are no regrets about the decision. The decision was probably the best decision to be made. At the yeah, for the net. Okay, we'll let it go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think but, that was an no, answer. No, no, no. But, but as Dana but, said, but, we are we just did yeah. a feasibility study with yeah. the YMCA yeah. in Frederick to look at. And it was it was the hospitals and and the, the YMCA, but we've had a lot of other groups in the community providing mm-hmm. input to look at a lot of things. You know, for years and years yeah. and years, we've talked here in Berkeley County about a YMCA, an aquatic center. Yes. I mean, all of these kind of issues. So we've done a feasibility study for both counties, um, and we're awaiting the final um, information and report. In fact, we're we have a meeting this week. To get to get that information, so I'm not saying you know, and, and childcare. I'm sorry, yeah, that was yeah. another big part of it because yeah. childcare is very important to us um, to to be able to provide mm-hmm. that benefit for our staff. So, um, and we did partner with with One Life, and yeah. I know I'm a member when the new. I decided to, to delay until the yeah. new facility opens. Um, Dana goes there, so I mean, we did try to make provisions. Sure, it's sure. not the same as our yeah. wellness center yeah. for sure. Because but. it was a family with inside. Family. Right, yeah, so. right. Yeah. Yes. John, now you know when you need Bill to back off, you just give him the Teresa McCabe death stare. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> and that just shuts Bill up right away. I don't know. It, it, it her, always, hers is pretty well honed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to work on mine. Yeah. It's been very, I use it a lot yeah. of time. Ask Ray. <laughs> with, with great success. <laughs> Bill just buckled there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. My knees got soft and I just scrolled uh, back in my chair. You know, it's interesting I, in, the importance of movement. As I get on deadline with the book, I will be like 12 hours a day sitting at my desk at the computer and, just, and I feel horrible. I mean, everything hurts. It hurts. It hurts to get up to go to you know go to bed, which is the only other activity because you know of, of the the of just being in stasis, right? I, I'm wondering if that's not part of it. Has become more and more computer focused and office focused as opposed to being out and running around. If, if a lot of the health statistics, the bad health statistics, aren't tied to that somehow. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, you can drive through for everything, so mm-hmm. you don't ever have to go. And you can actually now you can order everything. That's true. Bring it to you. You can order right. your food, your groceries. You never have to leave. Well, you know, and two, now that people are working remotely, too. Yeah. I mean, that's that's something that happened, mm-hmm. you know, during the pandemic and it seems to be working for a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, now, there are so. solutions to that, though. So there's standing desks, there's treadmill desks, there's bike desks. So you don't have to, you could find a way to at least part of your day. And it's not necessarily that you sit all day or you stand all day. It's how many times you get up and down. You know what has helped me? A puppy. There you go. Exactly. Take take your dog for a walk. Take Mm -hmm. for a walk. Uh Throw the frisbee. But your your literature says leader training. So what are you looking for? So it, like, that was what I was talking about, the self-management yeah, okay. programs, yeah. that this is the chronic disease um, yeah. self-management program, looking for people who would like to help others mm-hmm. going through and it. And how would they do that? Who would they get in touch with? With me. Okay. Yeah, just contact me. And uh, like I said, we have it starting January 18th, and it's virtual for this training. So you can do it from anywhere. And we actually do train people all across the state in this program from here. So. And if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do it? Um, they can do an email, which is my first name dot last name, so it's Dana dot djarnett at wvmedicine.org, or they can give me a call, 304-264-1287, extension 31814. Teresa, three minutes left. What else do you have for us? Um, Just wanted to mention that um, we also are expanding our Rockefeller Neurosciences Institute, which is currently in the Tennessee Avenue Medical Office Building, MIB3. That is going to be moving to the third floor of our Spring Mills Office Building on January. It's going to open on January the 9th. So that's going to allow us actually then to also bring our neurologists into the same office. They're currently on healthcare lane. Mm-hmm. So our neurosurgeons, our neurologists, our pain folks, they will all be in the same suite on the third floor, which was a shell. If you recall, when we built that building, we yeah. did not build out the third floor. So that's going to be the new home for Rockefeller Neurosciences Institute. We'll be having an open house ribbon cutting and so forth on January 8th. How is the Shepherdstown facility doing? That's doing well. Um, We have a lot of specialists now um, who are rotating in through there. um, And there is some um, shelled space there that we have plans um, to build out to allow us to um, offer additional services there. Do you have, Bill, calm down. Do you you, (laughs) (laughs) you want me to give him a look? (laughs) Teresa, do you mind? Can you stay till 10 (laughs) o'clock? Do do you have uh, expansion plans around the county elsewhere? Um, well, right now, um, our same-day surgery unit area, we're adding on, it's called our perioperative project. We're expanding the um, operating rooms mm-hmm. at um, Berkeley Medical Center and re- remodeling some existing space. So we're looking forward to that opening um, in March. Um, and as part of that project, um, we will have, um, an, uh, well, we have now a neurointerventional program, which we didn't have before. So as part of that project is going to be a new biplane IR suite, which don't ask me to explain that. <laughs> but basically, it's for the neurointerventional program to be able to offer additional services uh, along that lines. And um, then we're also going to... Um, uh, well, just that whole project. It's about a $40 million project. It's okay. also going to um, allow us to have a new, uh, another new operating room that's going to be used by the cardiologist to, again, offer new services. And so. you said it's called a biplane IR suite. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Yep. Well, that, that, that works out really well with our theme of the day, too, because it was on this date in uh, 1903, I think, when the Wright brothers did a little work at Kitty Hawk. So. <laughs> Not that well, kind of plane. Tomorrow, so. <laughs> that, was a, that was a biplane, too. No. A biplane. Not that kind of plane. If, if I can avoid the stare and if I can get within a qu- quick question, how are you doing with the conversion of single room in the... Um, that's kind of been put on hold because of some of these other projects that we're working on. Oh, I should also mention we did announce this year that we are planning to build a new medical office building down in Jefferson County on our property there. Um, we, we're calling it the Blue Ridge um, Crossing Campus. Well, so, there's a biplane involved in that as no, well, Teresa. it will not <laughs> involve a biplane. Experience. Before you go, one more look at no. Bill Stubblefield for me, if you don't mind. <laughs> Just keep that image frozen. Aww. Uh, thank you both very much for coming in. Thanks for having us. Appreciate thank your you. time.